My name is Oksana and welcome to my channel about photography. Have you ever wondered why sometimes you're getting on sharp pictures like this one? In this video we will be talking about camera shake and learn how to prevent it using different methods. We also will go over vibration reduction or image stabilization feature in cameras and lenses. So stay tuned and I hope you will learn something new today. Camera shake occurs when movement of the camera results in the image what lacks sharpness. There are two factors, combination of which comes into play. An unsteady camera and a slow shutter speed. It is as simple as if you move the camera during exposure at slow shutter speed, you can end up with blurry photos. Depending on how slow your shutter speed is, it can happen even during the slightest movement. Also, sometimes you can even move the camera on purpose to create an artistic effect. But most of the time photographers prefer sharp images. So, how do we prevent camera shake? We have two options here. We can either use faster shutter speed or use a tripod. Let's talk about shutter speed first. The question is how do we know which shutter speed is too slow? It will depend on three factors. Focal length of the lens, whether your lens or a camera have vibration reduction or image stabilization, and how steady your hands are when you are holding the camera. When it comes to focal length of the lens, the longer the lens, the faster the shutter speed you need to use to avoid camera shake. As you can see on this diagram, at focal length of 80 mm, the movement will be less obvious than at, for example, 400 mm. In general, the rule of thumb was that the shutter speed should match or be faster than focal length of the lens. For example, with 28 mm, the closest shutter speed number is 1 30th of the second. With 50 mm, it's 1 60th of the second, and so on. If you have shaky hands, make shutter speed at least twice as fast. Also keep in mind that modern cameras produce very detailed images and camera shake might be more visible than with older cameras, so doubling the focal length might be a good idea. With modern cameras, higher ISO is not as much of the issue anymore when it comes to noise as it used to be with older cameras. If you don't have enough light, you can always raise your ISO in order to avoid using the shutter speed which is too slow. Also, you will have to take into consideration whether your lens has vibration reduction, as Nikon calls it, or image stabilization, as Canon calls it, or your camera might have in-body image stabilization. It's all designed to reduce camera shake and you might be able to use slower shutter speed by few stops. The question is, how do you know whether your lens has it? Nikon lenses are usually marked with letters VR on them. When shopping for a lens, you will also see VR in the name. Those lenses also have VR on and off switch. It is recommended to turn VR off when the camera is on the tripod, because it can create an opposite effect. Some Nikon lenses also have the second switch, with help of which you can choose between normal and active VR. Normal VR is usually used when taking pictures on a stable ground. Active VR is used when taking pictures from moving vehicle, boat, train, etc. Some lenses even have on and off and modes packed into one switch. In Canon lenses, you will also see IS in the lens name and it will say image stabilization on the body. The same as with Nikon lenses, you can find stabilization on and off switch. On some lenses, you can also find a switch for stabilizer mode. Some lenses can have two modes and some even three. Mode 1 is the most popular and used most often. It's recommended for any subject which isn't moving 
And like with Nikon, it doesn't matter whether you are on a stable ground or in a moving car. It corrects vibration in all directions. Mode 2 is recommended for a subject which is moving in constant direction. Like during panning, for example, it will reduce blur from vertical camera movement at the same time keeping the blur from horizontal movement. Mode 3 is recommended to use for a subject which is moving more randomly like small birds, for example, or athlete during sporting event. When it comes to Sony, which became a very popular camera brand, this feature called OSS or Optical Stabilization or Steady Shot. You might be wondering why all those companies call the same thing differently. The answer is just simple, to confuse the customer. Just kidding. It's all most likely done for marketing and branding purposes, so it makes them different from the competition. As I already mentioned before, some cameras also have so-called IBIS, which stands for in body image stabilization, like Nikon Z series, for example. Though in lens stabilization is more common. The reason for that is because it was very costly to incorporate image stabilization into film camera. One thing is to build mechanism which will move sensor around. Other thing is to move roll of film inside the camera. Canon released its first IS lens in 1995 and Nikon followed only five years later by releasing its first VR lens in 2020. Actually, at the time, number of photographers using digital cameras was still very small. The first brand which started to offer in-body image stabilization was actually Konica Minolta, which later was bought by Sony. The first camera of his image stabilization was called Minolta D-Image A1. The other brands were soon to follow. Now you might be wondering, which one is better? Or is there any difference between in-body and in-lens image stabilization? Let's look at the pros of in-lens image stabilization. Nikon and Canon both claim that with the fine-tuning image stabilization with those modes, we discussed earlier, in lens image stabilization is more effective than in camera one. They also say that it is more effective on longer lenses where the movement needs to be bigger than the sensor can accommodate. And the last but not least, it is more effective in low light when it comes to accuracy of autofocus and metering, since the image comes already stabilized from the lens. Now let's look at the cons of in-lens image stabilization. First of all, those lenses are usually more expensive. This type of image stabilization can also sometimes influence bokeh in a negative way. Some lenses can produce annoying sound, which can be especially bad for the video. Now let's look at the pros of in-camera image stabilization. First of all, it works with all the lenses. So you can choose smaller, lighter and cheaper lenses without image stabilization. Also, bokeh is not affected and there is no annoying sound. What comes to cons of in-camera image stabilization? You can get less accurate metering and autofocus in low light, as well as it could be less effective with longer lenses. So, which one should you choose? I don't think there is one fits all answer here depending on the situation. It's also not the end of the world if you don't have image stabilization at all. It is sure helpful, but back in the days, film photographers were just fine without image stabilization. And now it is even more so because of the great ISO performance in the cameras. If you have a camera or a lens with image stabilization, it is a great idea to test it and see how slow is your shutter speed can you go and help. Also, you can test how sturdy your hands are, which is the third factor which comes into play. The sturdiness of your hands also will depend how many drinks you had last night, how much coffee in the morning, as well as your pose. There are some poses you can use to keep the camera stable. 
When holding the camera, tuck your elbows to your body and support the lens underneath with the left hand. This is another pose you could try by creating a base for the camera with your arm. To be honest, for me personally, I don't find this pose particularly comfortable. But you can give it a try. If you have any wall or a tree nearby, you can lean against it for support. Or you can use an assistant as I did with my dad. When squatting, make sure your feet are flat on the ground and your elbows are on your knees for support. The same applies to a sitting down pose. I saw that there was some debate going on about correct way of holding camera vertically. A lot of photographers holding camera like this with the right hand up and the right elbow up. Though there are some photographers who prefer this way. I guess it's a more comfortable, less tiring for the hand. For me, this way is more comfortable, but you try both ways and let me know in the comments which way is more comfortable for you. I tested my Nikon Z6 II, which has in-body image stabilization and my Nikon D610 with VR lens to see at what shutter speed I can hold the camera without camera shake. This is Nikon D610 with 50mm lens, which does not have VR. I started with one fifth of the second, and as you can see, it is not sharp. It is easier to see looking at the letters. One fifteenth of the second is better than expected. I would say it's pretty sharp, and of course, one thirtieth of the second looks great. All those are pretty slow shutter speeds. And I probably wouldn't risk it for important photo shoot, which I cannot check right away and reshoot. The second test was done with 105mm lens, which does has a VR. So I tested it both ways. For the first image I turned VR off. At 1 15th of the second it does not look sharp. 1 30th of the second actually did the trick. When I turned VR on, I got pretty good result with 1 15th of the second, which I did not get without VR. Nikon Z6 II really impressed me. I used 24 to 120 mm lens and its longest focal length of 120. This camera has in body image stabilization. At one second, it does not look sharp, but I would expect more blur at such a slow shutter speed. But look at one fifth of the second. Not bad, right? And of course, one fifteenth of the second looks great. Another solution for avoiding camera shake is a tripod. It will let you to use very slow shutter speed if you need to. For example, for night photography, smooth water or stretchy clouds. I would also recommend to use remote release or self timer to avoid another type of camera shake which can be caused by you tapping the shutter button while using very slow shutter speed. If you're on the go and can't set up a tripod, monopod might be a good idea. You won't be able to go as slow as you would with a tripod, but it could still help to stabilize your camera. Also, as I mentioned before, it is better to turn image stabilization off while using a tripod because it can have an opposite effect. Let's finally summarize what we learned today. Blurry images can be a result of camera shake while you are holding the camera at slow shutter speed. To prevent it, you'll need to either make your shutter speed faster or use a tripod. How slow can you go with your shutter speed will also depend on the focal length of the lens, whether your camera or lens have image stabilization, or how sturdy your hands are when you are holding the camera. That is all for today. I hope you liked the videos and learned a lot. And I see you next time. Please rate, comment and subscribe. It gives me more motivation to make new videos. And you can also follow me on social media, Facebook or Instagram. And I see you next time. Bye bye.